So recently, a paper was released revealing some new findings and research on what's being called Game and Gen, which is basically a generative AI that has recreated the game Doom. Now, I will start off by saying that there are much smarter people who've made much better videos than me um, on the technical side of this, but this video is more kind of talking about the actual real world adaptation of this research, whether or not um, games in the future will be made through generative and machine learning. I think this research is always very interesting. Teaching computers to, to learn is in of itself a very interesting concept. Being a solo game dev and someone who's been very passionate about video games for over a decade now, and this is something that's very close to me personally because I love making video games. and Anything that's gonna make making video games easier is something I'm gonna be interested in. However, I don't think this is it. Um, people obviously kind of, I guess the concept of this, because it's a research paper and we don't necessarily have access to all the tools and resources to actually give it a go, like how we do with ChatGPT, um, it's a little bit hard to say how things actually work. And because this model has been trained only on recreating Doom, we have no idea how it's going to go with any other concepts of games. And I think the biggest thing with this I want to promote is the fact that we need to have more discussion over things like this. I think right now AI is in a very intense state and I wouldn't say it's necessarily positive either. You've got AI bros and people who are very passionate about it, but you've also got people who are very much against it. And I think we need to have less debates over this sort of stuff and more actual discussions because I think that there are abilities that we can use with this machine learning that can benefit people and benefit us as a society because this technology has been developed so much more quickly than regulations or just people can even governing themselves figure out. However, because the research has been done now, it's been published, we're gonna start seeing more people get on board with this, much like how we saw um, with the generative art and obviously the, the chat models as well. People are gonna start creating their own game engine services that are based off of these models. And so the first reason why I don't think developers are gonna to be very embraceive of this technology uh, is because the process is going to be very buggy and include a lot of effort. As we've seen with other machine learning models, whether it's through text uh, or still images, it usually needs a lot of human manipulation to actually be a final product. And as we've seen in this paper as well, there's still bugs within the system. And that's not even the game itself, although technically it is now because it's a ML game engine, which is kind of something that we have no idea how to even work in. And I'm yet to see a fully functional LM service that has no issues, that works 100% of the time and is completely easy to use, much like how it is to use like a word processing on, on a computer or to upload a video or to film. Obviously there's still little caveats to certain things, but I feel like most of these generative services, AI services, I hate using the word AI because it's so broad and unspecific, but I have not seen a single model that is just far and forget it just works perfectly. Uh, and that's gonna be the same with game engines as well. It is gonna come with lots of issues and game engines by themselves without generative processes can be an issue. And so having that on top of it, uh, and then going on to you know more topics with the black box and stuff is gonna make it also a lot more difficult to go through. I also think it's trying to create a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. We have game engines that make games. We have companies with you know millions of dollars, even solid devs now who can make some fantastic games. Of course, the solution they're trying to say is gonna it's gonna eventually make it easier to make games. So one person can make their dream game. Uh, I don't believe that 100% because of some other things. It's also funny because, you know, with machine learning, you need to teach it stuff. And to teach it stuff, you basically need to show it stuff that's already existed. Meaning you need to make these games for it to learn. Now, people can probably cheat the system a bit if they're doing game development and they're just showing it still images if it's generating stuff. I guess you could render what gameplay should look like and be like. Uh, but again, it's like that we've seen it now get trained off of its own work and the results aren't always that good. And so it gets it gets a bit iffy eventually when you stop training it off of new things and train it off things that it's created that we think is new, but it's not actually new, it's already in the system. I think there should be research done in it being trained off of things it's already produced and seeing how that may decline the model over time because I think that's people, they're, they're gonna do that, right? If if people are making games in these generative game engines and then obviously they wanna generate different models 
then they'll generate uh, an example within the game engine and then train it off of that. And I'm curious to see in research how that actually affects the production of that game and how those images are generated, because I don't think it's going to be as good as if it were trained off of an actual handmade traditional game. The reason why I actually think this won't succeed in terms of game developers bringing it on board is that it doesn't have very transferable skills. I think the best example of this that's actually been good is when 2D animators switch to 3D. Um, or just going from 2D traditional physical art to then digital art. Understanding things like space and movement and time, squash and stretch and color theory and all these things are very easily transferable because it was mostly transferring things from a physical realm going to digital or going from you know two dimensions to three dimensions. And so a lot of the rules and the ways and workflows and skill sets people had, the things people had learnt through the study of art and, and you know technical knowledge transferred over because there were transferable skills. People knew how to make people both in 2D and 3D because they understood form and how the human body looks and works. If most of those skill sets don't transfer over to the games that are being generated, then you're gonna get crappy games for two reasons. One, because you can't manipulate and change it the way that you could traditionally. Uh, and two, the people who are making those generative games aren't the same people who are making those amazing classics we loved before. It's going to be novices and new people and those who are interested and think they can make stuff that don't have the training or keen eye to see how to improve something. And you could argue we should get those other people to go and use this. If you can't just go into the game engine and affect how the model looks, that's going to, again, affect how artists and designers do things. And even designers themselves, the concept of a mechanic how do you implement that into a generative game engine? It's it's resources and things that I think new people will get on board with and probably learn themselves. But to have a successful technology implemented in an industry, you need to have the veterans and those who are actually working already to be able to adapt to it. The other thing as well, as I said with Cole before, is the affordability question. You know, right now it's affordable to do generative AI and machine learning things with these servers because, you know, uh, NVIDIA is all keen for it and they've got the bank and money and investment to, you know, push people to make these sort of things. Um, you've got big businesses who are throwing money at this. And you know what? A few years ago, they were throwing money at NFTs. And I've not heard a single person just talk about how good their NFT monkey is. But much like with Uber and some other services had in the past, which, you know, before it was super cheap to use Uber over a taxi because they had investment. It's the same with Airbnb as well. It was cheaper to book an Airbnb than it was to stay in a hotel. But as we've seen now, uh, it's basically the same price for a taxi or an Uber. Eventually, I think some of these machine learned models are gonna be more expensive than just having a real person do it. Obviously, there's certain things I think that are cheaper. Maybe the chat and image stuff can be kind of affordable, but once you get into like video processing and games, it's gonna be a lot more expensive. So I don't think it's gonna be as widely adapted. And things as simple as power usage and price of equipment, you know, it might be cheap at the start if, you know, they have these certain of farms you can remote in on, kind of like what ChatGPT is now in terms of you can make an account and pay a fee. But over time, if the price goes up, there'll be a point where it is no longer affordable. Right now, I can download a game engine for free on a computer that costs $500. Obviously, you can spend more on that, but that's the thing. It can be quite accessible. But if game engines require thousands of watts of power with server farms to generate just simple images for you to prototype and experiment, that's going to get very expensive very quickly, especially for the people who aren't giant corporations or big game studio companies that want to invest in this. If you're a small solo dev, small person who wants to start making games, uh, it's not going to be an accessible um, option for you in the future. And I think finally, again, talking about the people, I just think that there isn't much goodwill left for AI, especially in the games industry. I personally am okay with having some of it. And like I said, there are benefits to it, but the discussion isn't being had. What's been happening is there has been a massive debate people who hate AI and people who love AI. And there's a few people in between like me who are like, oh, there's some good options here, bad options here. I'm fine with making a beginner script in ChatGPT or asking it to find a resource for me. I'm not going to trust 100% and I'm never going to use it fully in production as a final product. But at the same time, it's, you know, it's a weighing case of what is actually effective and what's ethical and legal and all these other sort of things. And so I think people who are passionate about AI, 
need to listen to the concerns of those who are against it or who are fighting, you know, for more traditional means. And I think once people listen more to each other and try to implement more reasoning, which I think the world needs right now, uh, we can have a better understanding and feel more confident going into the future. I know that's very hopeful and optimistic of me and probably not very realistic, but I think it's the use case that we need going forward. And there's also the ethics and legality of it. It can be quite messy and you can fight all for it, but it's the point that the discussion is being had over it. There is so much energy and time I have personally in a day to spend on certain things. And if half it's gonna be arguing whether or not a thing that's being produced is legal or ethical, it's gonna just drain me out. There's a reason why people hire lawyers and it's for them to stress over these sorts of things. Uh, I can't afford a lawyer and there's lots of people who can't either. And instead of focusing on making games that we know is a proving method and case, being the more traditional way, and instead of focusing on a, a much different way and then you know being more torn up and decided and having to constrain all these different things like i'm i'm exhausted making games myself and if it's just going to be as exhausting if not more because they're way more unknowns with the generative ai um then i'm probably not going to go with it because it's you know the proven method over the new one that is just the same you know game developers didn't really embrace nfts they didn't embrace cryptocurrency and i think with the way that discussion's being had with generative ai they're not going to embrace it either um people right now the last thing they want really is for for companies and resources and teams is to use you know focus less on the people and more on the machines but right now in the games industry with all these layoffs happening and kind of people feeling like they're just a number and they don't matter uh they they don't need to be told they're going to be replaced by robots that like and they're going to go off and make their own things and do their own stuff and be successful because they know how to do those things and i think businesses are going to realize as well especially once the investment dries up you know if ea or ubisoft or anyone else starts making ai based games they're going to realize oh that skilled workforce we had what happened to them we fired them can we have them back you're not going to get them back and so i think for the technology to actually be viable you need the people who are going to use it to actually embrace it and accept it. You know, devs do not trust AI for final products. You know, they, they don't tr trust it for programming. They don't trust it for 2D art. They definitely don't trust it for 3D art. So why the heck would they trust it for an entire game engine? Look, at the end of the day, this was a research paper and I think we should keep having them and I think research is always a good thing to do. And I think we should respect Game Engine uh, as being just a research paper. Now, whether or not it works in real world cases, in actual products, is an entirely different conversation. And I'm sure you've already formed your opinion on it. So whether or not you're for or against me, you'll tell me in the comments. Um, but I think those who are kind of on the fence, I think you shouldn't worry as much because the thing that I have realized using the AI I have in my life is that AI can't really create. It can only crudely manipulate. And so there's always going to be a need for human input. And most of the time, if you have the correct skill set, it's just a slower pace for you to use these generative tools. I think in certain things like automation and dangerous scenarios and, and basically human processing that could be done faster with computers, I think machine learning is all good for. But when it comes to creative input and learning complex things, even things like programming, you know, me personally, I would trust a senior engineer to program something for me than ChatGPT. And because game engines are such an encapsulated tool, and people have already produced so many good game engines and know how to make them well, you know, whether it's Godot or Unity or Unreal or Source or Game Maker or, you know, Scratch, or there's just so many tools out there for you to make these games in different ways and everyone has a different flavor. I think generative game engines will be a new flavor, but they're not gonna be as respected in the industry. So yeah, if you're learning a game engine, uh, keep learning it, keep learning tools, if you disagree with me, that's perfectly fine because I know there's people out there and I know this video will give me a lot of slack for people who are all for AI. I think personally, it is just a buzzword. It is not a product. I think I need to see some real products with some real benefits before I am more widely convinced of AI being a substantial thing that we should be concerned about. 
And so if you're interested in game development or people who make games and continue following along my journey, I'm currently making a Cafe Dasher game in Unreal Engine. So if you're new to the channel, then follow along for that. I also live stream, I'm gonna be doing some gameplay and hopefully as we've got an awesome audience here talking about game development, um, we can start having some more exciting future projects. Uh, so work here on those and hopefully you can all see them as well. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video.